Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the uh, continued restructuring of Warner Brothers Discovery. Some really interesting news in regards to the animation industry, the Cartoon Network. Uh, yesterday, I believe, they yanked a bunch of animated series off of HBO Max. Oh, Th okay. Yeah, this does not make sense. But these are already done. They're done. Yeah, it's not like they're canceling shows. Some of the shows were canceled, but I don't understand why they're taking a lot of animated content off the platform unless, like we discussed before the video, they're going to do another Cartoon Network. You but know, you have to pay for something. it or something. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with cartoons. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, like, this on top of the news of, uh, you know, several of the big wigs at Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers Animation getting gone yeah. in recent weeks. It's weird. And uh, this tells me that animation is not as important to Warners as people were hoping it would be. Right, like we have Scoob, the, the holiday haunt or whatever, that was done. I mean, just needed a little bit left, the music and some stuff. And they already paid for the music, so they're, they're filming the music anyway, recording it anyway. Yeah even though they canceled the show. Like that didn't make any sense to me. No, and we know uh, Tom Asham from uh, Cartoon Network, he oversaw Cartoon Network, he got gone. Um, the guy, DeMar- <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch His name em all. sounds like. <laughs> uh, the, guy, the guy in charge of Adult Swim right now, uh, I think it's Jason DeMarco, he's been making some comments on Twitter like he is expecting to get laid off. Um, the woman who's in charge of uh, Warner Brothers Animation, she got gone. And uh, you know we've been talking about you know some of the cartoon series will probably get axed, and we were talking about Velma oh. being a candidate. And you said the trademark had somebody been somebody sent me that the trademark was not renewed. Yeah, for Velma. That tells that was me. on Twitter, I think. It was, was on Facebook Twitter. Or whatever. Facebook. Thank you for saying that, by the way. I think it was Twitter. Yeah. So I mean, it's very clear that animation is not going to be important to Warner Brothers Discovery going forward. Uh, it's expensive, and David Zaslav doesn't like to spend money but, on. But you have cartoons. all this content that's already done. If it's I already mean, done, I don't see. That's what the what's so is. weird. It's like okay, I can see not making new stuff, but if you already have the content, the only thing I can think of is that they're going to spin it off into something else, and then you know. Is upcharge. upcharge or something, yeah. So let's let's talk about this again. People are like, oh, this is fine. HBO Max is fine. Everything's fine. No, it's it's really not. And especially if you're an animation fan, it's not fine. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 274,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. Speaking of animation, speaking of support, uh, we're going to launch Crimson Wren very soon on Indiegogo. You keep saying this week. It's already I, Thursday. I'm working on it right now. We're just trying to get all the perks, and it's going to be a pretty lean and mean campaign. It is. We it's don't do a lot of extra stuff. It's kind of like kind of like if you get an actual cheesesteak in Philadelphia. It's like you want it uh, with or without cheese. That's like the, those are your options, right? Um, and that's basically it. It's like, do you want the book or do you want the book with some other books? And that's basically it. We're not yeah. gonna we're not gonna do a ton of perks with it, but uh, it's all about getting the books printed and to you and getting the story done. But um, you know, again, this is a story uh, Geeky and I have been working on for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, Got so close to being a, a series a couple times. It did. It, it was very close. And uh, thankfully, we came across uh, Jose Garcia, who has worked in the animation industry and has worked on many animated projects. And he is helping us bring this to life. Uh, it's been a long time coming. So check that out. Um, yeah, I don't think Warner Brothers is going to pick up a Crimson Wren series. I don't no. think they're going to pick up anything. Uh, well, what titles are they removing? Well, some of them include Close Enough and Infinity Train. Now, I want to point this out, too. Um, HBO Max was really pushing into animation pretty hard under, yes. under uh, Jason Kawar. And in fact, surprisingly enough, they reached out to us on multiple occasions. They sent us a swag box, which was very cool for Close Enough. And Close Enough got, got axed uh, recently. Infinity Train got axed. Now, I did not expect them to pull the content off the platform, though, because Netflix, you know, they'll cancel a series, but whatever's out there is out it's still there. out there. And when you, you know, get the money for it, for it it's more content. You right. Know? So I think Variety broke it. Uh, Car Cartoon Brew has a better breakdown of it because they can actually they actually go back and talk about, you know, all the steps leading up to this. And it's it's not good news for, for animation at all. Uh, without warning, HBO Max slashes dozens of animated series from its service. Um, they said they, has, uh, they have uh, unceremoniously announced that they will be dropping a large number of titles from HBO Max, and the majority of them are animated titles. But why were they showing Elmo on the other picture? Uh, they're dropping some Sesame Street stuff, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, 
Not, you know, anything with Rosita. No. <laughs> <laughs> Canceling Rosita. Uh, no, but some of the stuff like Aquaman, King of Atlantis. Which I didn't was, even know that existed. No, oh, no, no. That was that, that one that looked the like. The Thundercats Roar. Thundercats Roar. That's right. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, close enough, we know, got canceled, but they're dropping it. Um, Dodo, Elliot from Earth, Esme and Roy. Uh, the Fungies, Infinity Train, Little Ellen. I knew Little Ellen got canceled. Canceled, but again, why pulled off the platform? Mau Mau. Messi goes to Aikido. Uh, uh, Mia's Magic Playground, something that I've never heard. Mighty Magiswords. I do know that one. Uh, my Dinner with Herve. Uh, it's a Odo. Herve or Herve? Herve. Herve. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't watched it. OKKO. Okay, uh, the Ollie Moon Show. Pac Man, the Ghostly Adventure. Now, this one I figured was a, a licensed thing. Um, some Sesame Street specials. Okay. Squish. Summer Camp Island. Uh, the Runaway Bunny. Tig and Seek, Uncle Grandpa. I know they were, st- these, but these, but these are shows that are are over. These they? are shows that have been over for years. Uh, Cartoon Network stuff, Victor and Valentino, which I think is another one by the guy who did Thundercats Roar and Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs. Well, it's almost like that style doesn't doesn't resonate with people when people don't want it. Oh, imagine that. Well, I mean, they said before that they were gonna like double down on Looney Tunes and Hanna Barbera stuff, but they took Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs. Well, out. they canceled Scooby Doo though. Yeah, so let's, and I'm pretty sure Velma's toes too. Uh, well, yeah, that was a live action one, but it was a really, no, it was cartoon. Was it, it was cartoon. cartoon You're yeah. right, it was cartoon. That's a very ill conceived. It's it's a potentially brand damaging uh, series. Well, the behavior around it wasn't very helpful either. No, no. So this is their statement. They're not telling people what's going on. As we work toward bringing our content catalogs together, under one platform, we will be making changes to the content offering available on both HBO Max and Discovery Plus. That will include the removal of some content from both platforms. At the same time, we're already starting to bring our content catalogs together, like the launch of the new CNN Originals Hub on Discovery Plus and a curated collection of Magnolia Network content coming soon to HBO Max. Was that like Magnolia Networks and Discovery Plus? Is that yeah? Is that like for old people or something? I don't know. Like Steel Magnolias? No, no, it's a Magnolia Network, like the the people that. Um, that did the house flipping in Texas. Oh, okay. Okay. It sounds like an old people channel. Like, what? Yeah, they have lots of on there. Welcome My to Magnolia. Mel- no offense, Mom. Welcome but to Magnolia Network. They well, do a lot of, like, house stuff. Well, the actual the actual old people network we're finding out is the CW. Apparently. But someone brought up a valid point. Um, they said, and I don't remember what it was on Facebook or Twitter. I think it was Twitter. They said that the reason the numbers are probably skewed that way is because of the daytime TV, like they're like the, news the judge the shows, shows and like, yeah, that kind of stuff. They said that's probably more to do with it than the nighttime. Basically, no one's watching at nighttime, which is why they're not even impacting the, the age range, which that just shows me more and more that no one's watching that shit. Or otherwise, it would have brought the age down. But old people love Judge Judy. Well, that's what they're and saying. Judge Joe and... Um... Ju- they need to get the the Judge Ryan. Court. Yeah. I don't they, know where that is. Any. They oh, need- that is the same mark. No further details have been offered about why these specific titles were cut or any future plans for the removed series. Cartoon Brew has reached out to Warner Brothers for comment, did not immediately receive any response. Um, I don't know if they know. Uh, I, I know we did a video like a week ago and I said, look, they're looking at DC right now. They're looking at the bigger picture. And I guarantee you they're going to turn their attention to Cartoon Network and all of that. And animation's expensive, and Zaslav doesn't like spend money. Well, here, here's what they're saying. They're saying that they, they're speculating that this is the other thought. I did have this thought too, that they might auction off some of the shows to other platforms. Uh, I wondered that they're going to try. You said that they might sell them off. Yeah. Zaslav hinted at the possibility during Warner Brothers Q2 call that said that some of the content we create will be distributed on our platforms, and some will go to other platforms. Like you can pay us. I mean, they retain the rights, but you pay them for the use to use it on your platform. I, I could see something like Infinity Trainer close enough being on Netflix because it crosses over with some of the stuff right. they have there. Right. So they, they're know, selling so. the rights to air it, but then that doesn't make sense. I mean, why are you? You know, it's like cutting off your nose by your face, and like. They're trying to make money back so hard that are they going to lose everything else because they're selling everything else? Yeah, that's that's kind of the – I mean, this is where it's a double-edged sword. Like, I understand them trying to cut their losses and they don't want to take chances on stuff they don't think is going to work. But then all we're going to be left with is legacy content. They're not going to take chances on new IP, um, which means that you're not going to create new stuff that future generations might might look back on, you know, fondly and become like tentpole franchises. You know? Well, apparently people don't know where the stuff's going to go, and they're under the impression it won't get aired because Summer Camp Island creator had posted on Twitter, we worked for five years to make 100 episodes of animation. We worked late into the night. We let ourselves go. We were a family of hardworking artists who wanted to make something beautiful, and HBO Max just pulled them all like we were nothing. 
Well, a lot of people are in the same position. Animation is not nothing. And we worked through the pandemic to make 20 linear episodes that are our most beautiful work yet. I cannot wait for you to see them. And you will see them. I will not rest. Um, yeah, now we've got uh, some people that worked on Close Enough. Cool. I love to work on something for literally years and then have it totally vanish. It's extremely good that TV writing has become building sandcastles at high tide. Okay, here's the kicker, though. When you sell your shows to these networks or you work you work for hire for these networks um, and you're hired to work on something, it doesn't matter whether it's one of these animated shows or a live action show. They can just snap it away like nothing tomorrow and not air it ever again. That's that's the problem. And, you know, we've got the creator of Infinity Train who was complaining before that they were chasing preschool audiences, mm -hmm. which we know is true. I mean, look at, you know, they've been pivoting to, to preschool because of the toy sales and Coco Melon and all that. But um, the Infinity Train guy, creator of Infinity Train, a show that got pulled from HBO Max and now can only be pirated. Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, uh -huh. nudge. Um, create, well, I mean, look, there are a lot of really great shows and, and Warner's kind of done this before. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of like Pirates of Dark Water, which is one of my all time favorite. Hey, I wanted to buy you the toys at I the know. con. You wouldn't let me. I know. Um, it got canceled prematurely. It was a very expensive show back in the day. In fact, they had, I remember when I was a kid reading about it in TV Guide. I think it was on the cover of TV Guide where they had a whole big spread on it. And they said it was the most expensive thing Hanna-Barbera had ever done at that point. It was a half a million dollars an episode in the early 90s, which was unheard of. And um, that's why it got canceled. But it was buried for years. Like they would run it occasionally on Boomerang, I think. But like if you wanted to buy it, you had to get the... Um, the DVD releases, it was like the Warner Archive where they would basically burn you a disc. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it was just, it completely disappeared. And this was something that was like a really big deal when it first came out. You know, down the memory hole it went. Um, here, Dead End Paranormal Park tweet about the fear of erasure that is increasingly common among industry artists. Uh, so what's happening at HBO Max is scary from a creator's perspective, like making a show for a streamer. You rarely get a chance for a physical release or for it to air anywhere else and being reminded they can just delete it from existence. All your work, your portfolio, awful. Yes, but that's what happens. That's, Here's the thing. When you when, when you make a deal to sell your show, um, it sucks. And I'm not disagreeing that it sucks. I 100% feel where they're coming from and I agree with them. But the reality is when you agree to that, yeah, you're like, yay. And this happened, I think, with a lot with like that, when they had um, the uh, Tokyo Pop comic oh, yeah. books too yeah, yeah. they were all dazzled by the fact that they could get this big advance and they could go and get their stuff printed and put in this case aired but it comes with the caveat a lot of times that they own you because they bankrolled it yeah. so they own the product so they can do what they want with it and that's why you have to have a really good lawyer when you make these deals because otherwise i mean you could lose it all yeah. Um, it's just the nature of the beast unless that, you make it yourself and that's that's the trade-off and it, it, you know it's it, Steven Universe. I mean, they could make Steven Universe as far as I know. They could reboot it and not involve Rebecca Sugar, just like they remade Powerpuff Girls and initially did not involve uh, Craig McCracken. This is why Megas XLR is in limbo. The creators want it back, but they have to pay them X number of dollars to, to get the rights back. And a lot of times that that is in the millions because they have to pay them back whatever their production costs are. Mm. I mean, this is the deal you make. If you don't have your own money, to make right. stuff and you're using other people's money, they have that power. Right, which is really shitty for creators. I mean, I, I mean, it you is. guys are think I'm not on your side. I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I completely feel where you're coming from. I agree with you. It totally sucks and it's absolute bullshit, but it's the nature of the beast. If you want to do this and you're going to use their money, this is kind of the caveats that go with it. And it sucks, but it's the reality of the situation. Yeah, so a lot of shows from Cartoon Network. Now, none of these are... I'm going to be honest, like none of these are what I would call like tentpole friends. I mean, mm -hmm. they have cult followings, but they're not like, you know, it's not like Scooby-Doo. It's not like, you know, Teen Titans Go. They're not going to pull that, you know, off the platform. But um, these, this doesn't surprise me at all, uh, Pac-Man stuff, because they're, they're licensed. But yeah, it's, it's weird because some of these were originals. A lot of these were originals. The Aquaman one, uh, Little Ellen Infinity Train, which actually has a pretty decent uh, following, but you know, Zaz Lab is just making these cuts. And yeah, it might be that these are like our B and C list titles and we can just, you know, ship them out to Netflix. Netflix can buy, buy them, buy us out if they want to deal with it. But then Netflix is cutting back on the animation too. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them are, except for a couple that people get mad when we mention. You might have to take Ben Shapiro's money if you want right. another season. Right, or go season. to Tubi. <laughs> go to Tubi, you know, because it, it seems like... Uh, a lot of these streamers, I mean, that was the goal for the longest time was I'm going to get my show picked up by Cartoon Network. I'm going to get my show picked up by Disney Channel. 
Oh, and now, don't let Disney Channel near your crap. Don't they'll, let they'll Disney, ruin it. Don't let Disney Channel near your crap. But you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's like, oh, this is this is the big leagues. I'm gonna get a cartoon picked up, and then it's it's you know chasing streaming. I'm gonna get a cartoon picked up on a streamer, and this is what can happen. And I, I don't have a solution. I'm just saying that animation is not as important to these streamers as like cartoon Twitter thinks it is. Well, what it's sucks not. was uh, a couple years ago during the pandemic, which I thought was weird. Like the pandemic's heading on its way out and that's when they decided they were going to go all in an animation. And I was like, but we're coming out of that because animated projects could still be made, but everything else got shut down. When they started picking up all this animation stuff, it was when we were almost out of, you know, like lockdowns and stuff. So to me, it seemed kind of odd. I was like, that's kind of dumb now. And they were all jumping on this. They were talking about animating TV shows and stuff. So they keep going. And then the pandemic did end. And then, I mean, it's not ended, but you know what I mean? Like the shutdowns ended. And at that point, you know, then they started unloading all this stuff, which I thought was so weird. They bought it because things like this, you buy it like two years ahead, like even publishing. If you sell a book, you might not have it on the shelves for like three, four years. So they basically are looking for the next big trend. So they're buying stuff two or three years ahead, predicting trends for the future. TV shows, same thing. It was so weird that in 2020, they're like, oh, the pandemic, let's buy animation. And then we're here two years later and they're unloading it like crazy. I think they thought that was going to be like a, well, I, I mean, part of that I think was perpetuated by people in the industry because they're like, now's our chance, you know, like everybody else is in lockdown. We and they did. found how expensive it was, that, time consuming. That is exactly, I think people were like, oh, because, you know, David Zaslav, he comes from Discovery, which is reality TV, which you can like film it and flip it. Right. You know, this within is not a couple how weeks. animation works, years. The, this is like, yeah, you started a series in 2017, you might not see it on the air until 2020 or 2021. And uh, it's, you know, half million, million dollars an episode. And he's like, I can just pay some rednecks to do some stupid shit and film it and flip it in like two weeks, throw it on Discovery mm -hmm. and make more money and have more people watch Jackass it. Jackass is more valuable than. But pretty much. I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's what he's he's thinking about. And I he, he clearly now Jason Kalar did like comics. He did like animation. Uh, Zaslav doesn't give a shit. And we've said this multiple times. Like, he, there are no sacred cows. He does not care. He just wants to make money. He wants to make money. The only thing he's looking at is, like, Scooby-Doo and stuff like that because he knows people are going to buy the merch in addition to and let's watching it. be honest, a lot of the shows that got axed, not all of them, but a lot of them were more watched by people that are, like, 20-something than they were watched by actual kids. So, you know, and kids and the, and things that are marketable that you can make toys of and sell and make, you know, other kinds of income from other areas, mm -hmm. they're going to double down on that. Like, they want the next Coco Melon. That's, they don't yeah. want the next, you know, Steven Universe that they couldn't sell toys from. And, yeah, Steven Universe didn't sell toys. They tried merging it. McFarlane did the, uh, like, the Lego sets. And mm -hmm. they were on clearance within, like, a month right. of... Nobody bought them. And a lot of these yeah. shows, are being honest, are not shows. Now, some of them are, but a lot of them are, are shows that are more watched by the cult following of a certain age than they are, like, by, you know, the kids and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time uh, you saw, you know, uh, do they have Summer Camp Island toys? Yeah, I, I think know. so. Uh, not toys, no, but they had it out. Yeah, Mighty Magisaurs Island. So, like, I'm saying, you know, Teen Titans Go, it sells toys, it sells DVDs, it sells T-shirts, it sells... You do know, they have Twitter Teen Titans go still? They, they, they think they do. Uh, well, I, I haven't seen them lately, but I knew, I knew they had them at one point. And they, they had Teen Titans I'm just saying, too, that you keep saying cult following. That's the key. Cult following implies a small but, you know, very cult-like group that loves it. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit, I'm actually, I am actually sad about this because... What we're going to see is, because Cartoon Less Network... chances on people. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to get that those new... Cartoons. We're no. not going to get a chance to get these new franchises. We're going to get more rebooted shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is what's going to happen because they're established franchises and they're just going to reboot it and try to make it friendly to their cult audiences. And then it all does is ruin the originals, piss off the fans. Like they wanted to come with it. And you get the same types of people that are watching those shows. And it's like, it's a, now it's just going to limit for everyone. So what is what is going to happen? Your your uh, best shot right now, I think, at, at doing any kind of animation or breaking into animation is you're going to have to do it yourself, which is a hell of a lot harder because we have people coming in that had very little experience working in animation, getting shows picked up, um, and then Cartoon Network. Was, handed shows. Yeah, being handed shows in some cases. Like, hey, you did a Tumblr, you did a Tumblr comic that nobody read? Cool. Here, have a show. And that's that's over. You have the right check boxes. Pop pretty down. much, pretty much, and and that's over now. And uh, you know, I'm I'm torn on that because I'm like, we're never going to have the opportunity 
to find another Scooby-Doo or something because the, the circumstances are different. And Scooby-Doo, you gotta remember, I mean, that was on you know Saturday morning cartoons, 60s and 70s. And it had the benefit of, and actually Scooby-Doo wasn't even, it was a hit, but it wasn't like as big of a deal as it is now until years later when everybody right. grew up watching reruns but, of it. And with that, they started making all the new movies. And they started which making they movies. were pretty good for a while there. We used yeah. to own all of them because the kids loved them. Yeah, we did. We'd we watch them because they were fun. They were good. They were good. And then it became a, a franchise, but really it was like, oh yeah, Scooby-Doo is that old 70s cartoon and it was on Saturday mornings and it was, you know, reruns in the afternoons or whatever. And you watched it because there was nothing else to watch, you know? And uh, we don't have that now. You've got streaming and people can watch whatever they want to and they're apparently not watching this stuff. So I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Going to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.